Now, with the left hand, pump the primer pump handle while watching the fuel pressure gauge. Keep pumping until fuel pressure reads at least one bar needle in the middle of the scale. This could take up to 15 strokes. When finished, secure the handle in the down position. Okay, now the pump. I know I saw this before. Is this? Yes, that's the fuel priming pump. And the fuel pressure gauge. Okay, pressure gauges are going to be up here. Yeah, I remember yeah, I remember the basic setup from the 190 as well. So we have the oil pressure over here on the right, as denoted by that orange or brown band right there. Fuel pressure is going to be over here on the left with the yellow band. So can okay, let me see how this works. I'm going to left click. Yeah, just left click and release. So it may take up to 15 pumps. Okay, now I've got that gauge coming up. Said to go to about halfway. That's, yeah, that's about halfway. Okay. When finished, secure the handle in the down position. That, yep, it automatically released back to the down position. Set pump selector to pump one and pump two. So pump selector, pump one, pump two, pump one and pump two. So I've got both pumps moving right now. And we'll, yeah, we'll wait a little bit until we start to look in more detail at the fuel system. But, okay, so got that. Set the throttle lever a bit from the 0% position. So I've got my throttle mapped, of course, to my throttle on my HOTAS, my uh, real-world throttle out here. And I'm going to just crack it, move it just forward of the 0% position. Now, I've got a ZU, like an off. Or maybe that's supposed to be like a minimum setting. I'm going to go... I'll go right there. That's... That's... Yeah, it, that, that's fine. We'll see how it works. That's what we're trying to do here is figure out, uh, figure this sort of thing out. Okay, set the radiator in your mode to the off, a open position, AUF. So radiator was down here, open. Okay, I've got, hey, automatic, I know that. <laughs> I know that German word. Okay, so left click. Okay, right click to go right, left click to go left, AUF. So that's in the open position. And that's... Could I? Yeah, the the radiator. Let me go to an extreme real quick. Yeah, the radiator, you can see just there, just aft of the main gear at the wing root. So, yeah, you can see it's open right now. So, yeah, it intakes air from the, the forward just aft of the gear well. Yeah, so that's open. Now, can I... Can I see it as I close it? Working? Uh, maybe not. Maybe I have to have, uh, maybe I have to have power on. Yes, I, th I think that's going to be the case, is we have to have, I think we might be, I'm not sure if it's, I think it's electrically operated. That's one of the details I'll look into, is whether I need hydraulic power on, or if that's electrically uh, open and closed. Okay, so, enable the electrical fuel pump with E101 circuit breakers. So, circuit breaker E101... This is going to provide power to the pump. So we had the pumps in the P1 and P2 position. Now they both have power, and now they're both working. And you can see my fuel pressure is, has actually come down. I might need to do something about here. We'll see if it still works. Signal ground crew technicians to start cranking up the internal, the inertial starter. To do so, bring up the comms menu, select F8, and issue the order to run the starter. And wait for the clear report. Usually it takes about 20 seconds to complete. And then set the ignition selector to M1, M2. It's going to be my magnetos. So let's go up to M1, M2. Let me read ahead here so that I don't get surprised by something as we go. Raise the starter handle cover and pull the starter handle. Watch the fuel pressure gauge and operate the primer pump if the pressure drops below 0.8 bar. It's, yeah, it's already way below that. It's down to like zero. I'm going to have to reprime one way or another and as soon as the engine starts firing release the starter switch now the starter is right here so click to raise the cover so I think I yeah I think I see the this is something that you would do just from the cockpit you would just have a a separate control to uh, turn the flywheel here yeah, it has to be done externally so I have to have one of the uh, guys on the ground crew turn the turn the uh, the flywheel and then I pull the starter and that's what's going to 
uh, crank the or actually start the uh, engine itself. Check the tachometer indicates more than 600. Close the starter switch cover. Okay, then it's just into the normal uh, checking fuel and oil pressure gauges. And if I don't have pressure ten, within 10 seconds of engine start, I know that I have a problem as I have another yep, 109 up there flying around. If not, shut down the engine immediately and check for leaks. So I'm going to be looking for oil pressure right here and fuel pressure should be up to the uh, whatever that needs to be, the 1.8 uh, 1.8 bar setting. Okay, is that it? Yeah, then we get into the warm up. So let's go ahead and try this. Okay, I know that I need to reprime and get some more pressure. I wonder if doing this, I hope doing this with the power onto the pumps is not going to damage it. Uh, it, it won't now that I think about it. Okay, so it's above one. Let's call F8 and run inertial starter. Copy. Now it says it'll take about 20 seconds and I should get a call back. Yeah, I, I should get the clear report in 10, 20 seconds. At that point, I go M1, M2 and I pull the starter, release the starter once it's run up and I can hear the flywheel start to spin. Yeah, this is going to work. Yeah, exactly like the the Fuck Wolf 190 except that yeah, I I'm relying on the ground crew to turn the flywheel. Okay, it's been about 20 seconds, hasn't it? I'm not getting any kind of a I'm not getting a clear report like I was expecting. I can hear it running. And I can actually hear it Possibly starting to spool down. Let me give it a try. Okay, M1, M2. Yeah, I think I... Okay, yeah, that, that did it. That did the trick. Okay, it breaks. See, this is why... Man, we, we really, really need chocks on all these aircraft. That's the perfect example. I started creeping forward. Now I'm going to have to every time I advance the every time I advance the throttle, I'm just going to have to I'm just going to have to stand on the brakes and I hate doing that. Oh, what I wouldn't do for chocks. What what aircraft is it that has the chocks? Was it the was it the C101? Anyway, <laughs> case in point. Okay, I've got my wingman out there started up as well. Okay, so uh, pressures. Okay, got good fuel. I've got high oil pressure. Well, that's better than no oil pressure. I'll, okay, let me think about this for a second. Let me read up on the warm-up procedure. I'll have to go back and I'll, I'll try that again. Maybe it was just, maybe I didn't give it long enough to get the clear call, but I, I sure was expecting a radio call and didn't get it. Okay, now, release starter handle, got that. Check the tachometer, indicates no more than 600 RPM. So, yeah, I need to pull it back down to... 600 now that was that's why my oil pressure was high I needed to have it at no more than 600 rpm so I pulled the throttle back to the yeah, it's actually back beyond the ZU position so that's that mystery solved so you're only supposed to I assume just barely crack the throttle you don't take it up to the detent and the red band in that case not yet anyway and okay I've already got the cover down on the starter mechanism Check fuel and oil pressure gauges. Okay, I've got that. Now, warm up. Maintain no more than 600 RPM for 20 to 40 seconds. I'm there. Gradually increase RPM until oil pressure reaches no more than 9.5. Whoa! Okay, that's 9.5. Okay, that's where it needs to be, right there. And that was... It's... Just barely cracked. Maybe like an eighth of an inch off of on my uh, on my joystick, just an eighth of an inch off the stop. Actually, just a touch more since I want it up to yeah, about 900 or 9 950. That's that's fine. Okay, continue checking the fuel and oil pressure gauges for sudden changes in pressure, and shut down immediately and check for leaks if noted, and they're holding in there just fine. Now, continue checking coolant temperatures, oil temperature, crop pitch indicator, tachometer, 
supercharger pressure gauge and fuel contents gauge. And okay, so a tachometer is right there. It's got the supercharger uh, pressure gauge or manifold pressure gauge, ETA, or yeah, expressed in ATA right there down on the bottom stop all the way back. Okay, coolant temperature is right up here. So that's on the bottom peg. Okay, I've got my radiators open. And let me do that check right now. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's as good a time as any. Let me go to the closed position. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, I can see it moving now. So that, let me go to an external. So yeah, that is that mystery solved. You have to have the engine on and running apparently, or maybe it's just power on. Maybe that was maybe that was it. Uh, power off of the generator or something like that to have that work. Now let me go back to the open position and continue. Yeah, you see with a close that the pressure, I'm sorry, the temperature increased, and now with them open, you can see that it it came up in the cockpit, just in relation to the the rest of the wing structure. And yeah, it's full open right now in the external view. So, okay, so learned a little bit there. And fuel oil pressure, I'm sorry, oil temperature is right down here. It's a little bit, yeah, it's low, it's still coming up. And as we start to get into the warm up, that will come back into its proper range. Uh, prop pitch should still be at the 1230, right? Yep, 1230. Fuel content, so this is our fuel quantity. And I didn't look and see exactly how much fuel. I'm assuming we had 100% of full internal load of fuel. So that is... Four, yeah, 4,000 liters. Is that right? 4,000 or 400? 4,000 liters is an awful lot for a BF-109, I would have thought. That's a lot of fuel. So you have 4 times 100, so 400 liters. Okay, got it. Now we get into some checks. We're going to check the fuel check the fuel system when engine RPM is about 2,000. Keep the full feed selector in both P1 and P2 for 30 seconds. Check for sudden changes in fuel pressure or engine RPM. So, okay, that is going to be what I do here. Now, what I gather is that there are a whole bunch of checks that I do when it with 2,000 RPM. Let me read ahead real quick. Check the radiator flaps by moving to the off and zoo positions. I just did that. Okay, that was just an off check of the radiator flaps. Now we're back into the off open position. And check electrical propeller pitch control when the engine is at 2000. Shut off the battery with the corresponding switch on the master circuit breaker. Turn the governor switch to the manual position. And then we just exercise the manual control of the prop pitch. Make sure the indicator works properly. Same thing we did with the engine off. Just at 12 o'clock position, then back to auto, and this should go back to 12.30. If checks are properly conducted, engine gauges indicate properly, and oil temperatures at least 30, you can proceed to the run-up. So, okay, we could actually do that right now. Our oil temperature is within the range right there, the bottom of the range being 30, the top being 1, 130. So, let's go ahead and do the, the 2,000 RPM checks right here. I've got my brake sail. I'm going to slowly advance until we get to 2,000 RPMs on the gauge. Uh, slowly being the key. Okay, there we go. Now I'm just checking for any sudden, uh, sudden uh, changes in RPM and sudden changes in any pressure, really. And I can see my prop pitch start to come down as well in response to my, my throttle setting, so let me increase the throttle just to keep it at 2,000. Yeah, I can, I can see the pattern here. You have to just, if you want on the ground to just do checks at a specific RPM, you just have to wait until the prop pitch catches up, because as the prop pitch changes, then Therefore, the engine RPM is going to change as well as we have... Hey, you're not my wingman. We have another 109 taxiing by to... He might have just landed. That might have been one of those that was just flying around. But, um... Okay, so at 2,000 RPM, everything was looking good as far as the gauges. I'm, I'm running hot, aren't I? That can't be a good thing. Look, my radiator's open. Do I not? Yeah, I do. So... Okay, let me... In, the, in either case... Uh, bring the 
throttle back down. Is that normal? For it to go that hot? It probably is on the ground. It's probably just due to having no airflow over the radiator. So when I went to the higher RPM and higher engine the throttle settings, it just naturally went up above the, the limit there. Well, I say limit loosely. That's not really a limit. That's just the normal operating range that it's starting to come back down into. That's fine. Okay, turn the... Okay, that's right. I wanted to exercise the manual control of the, the prop pitch. So I wanted to do that with 2,000 RPM. Was that... Yes, I did. Okay, so my temperature's back down some, so I can go back to 2,000 RPM. And that's why it was kind of twitchy on me before, is that I was kind of fighting the... Uh, with throttle, I was actually fighting the, the prop pitch. Okay, so I can just actually take that back up to manual control, switch up, go to 2,000 RPM. And yeah, that then you have more direct control over the RPM that way. I'll exercise the switch. That's going to change the prop pitch. Now I'll go back to auto. And yeah, now my, my prop pitch indicator is coming back down. It's going to stabilize, well, wherever is appropriate to hold it into the uh, the uh, the RPM that is uh, being calculated. It's, it's almost like a little like a little analog computer that is controlling the prop pitch. It takes a lot of stuff into account and uh, and just gives you the right prop pitch for whatever situation you're in. Okay, so I can pull the throttle on back now. Okay, if all checks are properly conducted, engine gauges indicate properly, the orbital temperature is at least 30, you can proceed to the run-up, so that's what we'll do. Uh, okay, then we get into engine shutdown, but okay, let's go into the run-up check.